feeling of an emotion is a process that is distinct from having the emotion in the first place. We need to understand what is an emotion. And an emotion is the execution of a very complex program of actions. Some actions that are actually movements or movements that are internal that happen in your heart or in your gut and movements that are actually not muscular movements but rather releases of molecules say for example in the endocrine system into the bloodstream and it's something that is set in our genome and this of course comes from ancient times what i'm about to do it doesn't make any sense it's not logical it is a gut feeling I would like to explain that I am a qualified and experienced sound therapist. I have studied spiritual and scientific texts as they relate to sound and vibration. Some of the things I'm going to talk about today might initially sound impossible, but I would ask you to suspend your disbelief and remember in the words of the author Paolo Coelho, people never learn by being told, they have to find out for themselves. It's about taking my words today and relating them to your own experience. And if enough truth resonates for you, go out and experience it for yourself. Find out if it holds true for you. Modern people in general are really not in touch with intuition. And we've forgotten how to be aware of sensory data of many of the dimensions of life. The world today is very different from the world I grew up in. Intuition is not just some pink and fluffy feeling. It's awareness here and now on the world, and that's everything. The sea within holds much knowledge. I would like you to consider that we live in a vibrational universe. You are a vibrational being whose cells and organs all pulsate at a particular frequency. Our brain pulsates with electromagnetic energy affected by our emotions, our health, and our general state of well-being. Our body contracts and pulses at various rates, including your heartbeat, your stomach contracting, and the very act of breathing. Together, they make up you, a composite of frequencies, and so we each vibrate to our own personal tune. Our world seems like a heap of fragments. Wisdom has been replaced by knowledge, and knowledge has been replaced by information, pieces of data, chunks. It doesn't make any sense. It's not logical. It is a gut feeling. changed substantially in a hundred thousand years we're still operating out of the lower brain the reptilian brain fight or flight kill or be killed now we like to think we've evolved and advanced because we can build a computer fly an airplane travel underwater we can write a sonnet paint a painting compose an opera but you know something we're barely out of the jungle on this planet but what we are is semi-civilized beasts with baseball caps and automatic weapons <laughs> unenlightened half-wits could have taken this beautiful place and turned it into what it is today. Major malls and mini malls. They put the mini malls in between the major malls. And in between the mini malls, they put the mini marts. And in between the mini marts, you got the car lots, gas stations, muffler shops, laundromats, cheap hotels, fast food joints, strip clubs, and dirty bookstores. America the beautiful, one big transcontinental commercial cesspool. And how do the people feel about all this? How do the people feel about living in a coast-to-coast -coast shopping mall? Well, they think it's just fucking dandy. They think it is cool as can be. It just seems to me, seems to me, that only a really low IQ population could have taken this beautiful continent, this magnificent American landscape that we inherited, 
Well, actually, we stole it from the Mexicans and the Indians, but hey, it was nice when we stole it. My name is uh, Chief Golden Light Eagle from the Yankton Sioux Reservation, and I'm um, concerned, like all of you, and maybe some of you that don't know, uh, we're concerned about our air. Our air is being polluted um, purposely uh, by relatives that we call, might call government, might call uh, military, might call a new world order. Um, with everything that you're doing to the air, you're doing to every living person on Mother Earth. It doesn't just affect us, it affects uh, the trees, it affects life. All the chemicals that you're putting up there, up here, it's, it's not necessary for the earth takes care of its own. The universe takes care of its own. Could you please stop poisoning the air? The air belongs to everybody. People never learn by being told. They have to find out for themselves. The sun is the spring that drives all. The sun maintains all human life and supplies all human energy. Food is one of the most important elements. What we consider as food is just processed sunlight. We eat sunlight for energy. Fruits, vegetables, meats, everything that we eat consume the HCO molecules that the plants created. The energy that we consume through food is actually the same sunlight that plants used to forge these elements together. The reason why we have 170 million acres of genetically engineered corn and soybeans and cotton and canola oil and sugar beets in the United States is because it doesn't have to be labeled. Disease, depression, negative behavior patterns. These are all symptoms of a body and mind being out of tune, quite literally. Genetic engineering is a process where scientists take genes from one species and force it into the DNA of other species. Every single independent study conducted on the impact of genetically modified food shows that it damages organs, it causes infertility, it causes immune system failure, it causes holes in the GI tract, it causes multiple organ system failure. The whole concept of genetically modified organisms is throwing a monkey wrench in the life on this planet. What if we could produce more yield on the same amount of land, squeeze more water from a single raindrop, conserve natural resources while caring for the environment? Monsanto is the company that told us that PCBs were safe. They told us that Agent Orange was safe. They told us that DDT was safe, and now they're in charge of telling us if their own genetically modified foods are safe. So one part of our body knows what's going on in the other part of the body because we're wired up with Tesla resonating circuits. Now, all of these various circuits in the body go through very specific teeth. Um, how do teeth enter into this whole system? The teeth act like circuit breakers. The teeth appear to function similar to the way that a lymph node does in the lymphatic system. If you have infection in your lymphatic system and it goes up the lymphatics, it gets caught and trapped in a lymph node. Well, emotions are trapped in the body as magnetic fields. Those magnetic fields tend to end up being trapped in teeth as well. What you'll find is that the majority of chronic illnesses actually begins with an emotional event. And we have, because we have feelings, because those feelings can actually stay in memory in terms of the 
elaborations that we make about the feelings, then we have a possibility of using feelings of certain emotions for future planning. And that emotion is a magnetic field that starts blocking the circuit by getting caught in one of the teeth. And as it does so, it begins to lower the voltage in the tooth. We can create a situation that reflects back a more positive experience of life. Ancient teachings view of how the world is created is through sound. Sound can at the very least affect matter. Notice the symmetrical shapes and the similarities to those found in sacred geometry and within the harmonious shapes found in nature. In the following two clips, you can hear the difference between the healthy pulsations of a yeast cell and the high-pitched frequency of one that is stressed. Notice the distortions as represented on the cymoscope of the one that is stressed. There are five types of intuition, analytical, observant, questioning, empathetic, and adaptive. Analytical intuition involves spending a lot of time researching and gathering data before making a decision. People who identify as analysts prefer to explore every potential scenario and want to understand all the details before a judgment is made. They like to take their time and are the most thorough and precise. Therefore, haste, impulse, and recklessness are commonly avoided by them. Next, we have observant intuition, which involves gathering clues about people and scenarios. People who identify as observers are often visual learners and pick up on physical cues in their immediate surroundings. They are experts at finding visual patterns and notice subtle differences in their environment, such as a coworker not returning their smile, or when an object goes missing. Observers tend to excel in outdoorsy and hands-on activities, such as gardening or visual thinking careers. Then there is questioning intuition which involves making judgments based on real-life evidence. People who identify as questioners would rather rely on asking or surveying others directly instead of looking up online statistics before making a decision. People with questioning intuition can make excellent investigators, accountants, and financial examiners. Then we have empathetic intuition, which involves great listening skills to understand where the source of the problem lies. People who identify as empathizers withhold judgment and allow their colleagues and clients to vent. This helps them figure out what works best in their favor before making a decision. They usually work well in teams and are cooperative, considerate, and introspective. People with empathetic intuition make natural psychologists, doctors, writers, and counselors. And finally, there is adaptive intuition, which is the most common form of intuition represented to the public. Adaptive intuition is based solely on gut feelings and is used by others to help them think and react quickly in situations that require immediate action. They seem to always have a hunch on just about everything. Modern people in general are really not in touch with intuition. And we've forgotten how to be aware of sensory data of many of the dimensions of life. Thank you for watching and much love to you. Love you more than me